But never I say my pen dream TV. Pen dream TV, dear. I see them. You po. Felix. Ali. Yes. Two quick initial comments. You see, that bar association condemnation of Akufuadu should be decided. The attorney general. In fact, the attorney general did even more politics. He actually asked for Bamiya to be voted for. The Bar Association knew this was going to happen. It is not the first time they invited President Kufado. If I'm not mistaken, there's a third time President Kufado has headlined their conference. And he has done that all the time. So if they were interested in averting a repetition, they wouldn't invite him. There's no compulsion to invite President Kufado because he was a lawyer. There are many prominent personages in this country who may not even be lawyers, who have something more meaningful to say than President Kufado. So perhaps, with the exception of the Attorney General, who is the leader of the bar and who must be there? Any number of distinguished personalities could have been invited. It is just that the GBA has lost its glory. As far as I'm concerned, they are now the uh, uh, legal wing of the MPP. They should stop wasting their time. They should close the loop and stop wasting their time. So that condemnation is the word of moral value, must be dismissed of handishly. Right, number two, me, I knew President Kufar would be a disaster. Yesterday, he proved that his tenure is an aberration that should never have happened to this country and should never happen again. This is a president who goes to a bar conference and believes that throwing presidential tantrums is what will get us in the NDC to stop commenting about his deliberate distraction of state institutions through deliberate politicization. Look, he is behaving like a fascist leader. What he wants to do is to capture this our state in its entirety. So everywhere must be packed with MPP types. He has done it at the Electoral Commission. Randy, if you go to the NCC, the lady there is an MPP lady. She's called Kathleen Nadi. Everybody knows it. You go to the Electoral Commission, Jimmy Sambos Manasari, Apia Hine, an MPP propagandist sitting in studios defending them as an appointed as a Electoral Commissioner. So Randy, I, in Abra Sebukamankese, have to contest an election against an MPP candidate, and the moderator is Apia Hine, an MPP propagandist. What does Akufar want to tell us? That we are all mad in this country, we can't see. And Sly wants to defend this sort of thing. Randy, when we say that President Akufar is politicizing the judiciary, or when President Mama makes the point, he does not make the point having just woken up from a slumber. There is fact. Look, Randy, when President Akufar was around, we knew that the lives of Justice Doche, Justice Nene, were all at the MPP sympathies. But at least, President Kufo had some subtlety. You know, he added some finesse to what he was doing. But as for President Kufo, though, he has chosen the crudest method to populate our judiciary with MPP types for the sole purpose of protecting his terrible government from scrutiny and accountability. And there are many things that have happened, Randy, that I will give you evidence of. That buttress the point. You see, when Sly pretends that he is unaware of the collaboration of the people we are talking about, first of all, we have not said everybody appointed to the judiciary is MPP. There are some fine judges in there. And they do a decent job. So President Obama has not made a blanket statement. But there is a preponderance of highly partisan individuals whose political identity is crystal clear, who have been put there for the purpose of protecting Akufuado's terrible governance. That is what we are condemning. Look, Randy, Solomon Chumesi, I will give your producer his video, sitting in a studio in Kumasi, representing the new patriotic party as a propagandist. He later became the Doma East MPP chairman. Randy, he was appointed to the high court by President Akufuado. There's another one called Eric Ansa Ankuma. Again, I will give your producer his Facebook post. First of all, he even used to work with Obriwa, the MPP Deputy National Secretary in his chambers. He is a known MPP activist who publicly voiced his support for President Akufuado. And it is public. Randy, I will give it to your producer. He can, she can display it on your screens for everybody to see. Randy, Justice Yagew, and I'm sure Sly knows him. As for him, he publicly admitted his MPP membership before the public accounts committee, sorry, public, sorry, the appointments committee of parliament. Yeah, he contested the 2016 MPP, sorry, he stood as the MPP candidate 
in the 2016 elections in whole West or so. In fact, he was the one that Manasseh was referring to in the post. And as for him, he's on record to have admitted it. So it's not a matter of debate. Randy Clemens Honyeniga was an appeals court judge when he openly declared support for President Kufandu's re-election bid. A few months after that, he was made a Supreme Court judge. Randy, there's another one called Dr. Ernest Owusu Dapa, who is a known MPP person, who was a member of President Kufuadu's legal team in the 2020 election petition. He's been made a High Court judge. Randy, there is Justice Nabila Sahiba, who actually is the wife of President Kufuadu's trade minister. So the, the woman sleeps with, his, with her husband on the same bed, and we are told that she is okay. insulated from political influences. Trade minister. Yes, uh, Katie Hammond. Randy, there's more that I could go on and on in sight. So we are not just shooting from the hip. And this has been done deliberately to skew the, the, the skills of justice in favor of President Kufuadu. And Randy, we see it on a daily basis, the effect of this. And let me give you a few examples. Randy, even in this injunction that has been brought against the EC, right? Randy, only two weeks ago, the Ghana Police Service wanted to stop a demonstration by opposition forces against President Kufuadu. Did they not get a judge to sit on the case? Randy, did they not get a judge to sit on the case? Just a week after that, four political parties filed a suit against the EC to stop them from commencing a registration exercise that is starting today. Suddenly, the Chief Justice disappears, and the entire judiciary disappears with her. We cannot get a judge to sit on that case. President Mahama makes a post about that matter yesterday. Within hours, sorry, minutes, suddenly the registrar of the court sends a message to one of the lawyers telling him that 17th October, a date by which the registration exercise would have been completed, is a date fixed for the hearing of the case. So the injunction is moot. The EC can go ahead to do what we consider to be an illegality. Meanwhile, within that same period, the police were able to secure an injunction, or at least get a judge to sit on an injunction that they wanted. Why the different strokes for different people? Randy, the minority, and he is in parliament, when the minority threw out the E levy and the 2021 budget, a certain Justice Abdullah went to court, the Supreme Court, to seek to have the uh, rejection overturned. Right? Within days, that case was listed and heard, and the minority's rejection of the budget was overturned. Then the majority came into parliament and purported to have reinstated the budget. The minority also filed a suit at the Supreme Court to challenge that and have it overturned. That suit has been pending for two years, Randy. So by the time they come to look at it, the budget cycle would have been... In fact, the budget has, has been completed. Another one has been completed, and we are in a new one. So it is moot. Randy, what did they not do to open it? Clemens Honyoniga, a judge who had openly expressed support for President Kufuadu, was appointed to sit on the case. The man reached 70. At the time, he had become a Supreme Court judge, and so the law required him to retire. When he was given six months extension to complete the case. He could not complete it, so another judge was appointed. This judge says that in the interest of fairness and balance, let me start the case affair so that I can even scrutinize the demeanor of witnesses. The Attorney General is unhappy about it. Randy, within weeks of this, this judge was transferred from Accra to another place. And a new judge appointed to sit on the case to continue from when Clemens Honyenuga finished. This is not coincidence. Randy, look at what they did in the Muntia three cases. Three young men disparaged judges. Everybody condemned it. They were hauled before the Supreme Court. The owners of the station on which they sat, who didn't even know who was appearing on their station, were also holding. They were given 10 minutes to defend themselves. The boys were given three months imprisonment and heavy fines. The owners of the station were fined heavily too. Kanega Pon, an MPP MP, who actually has a greater standard of responsibility in society, insulted a judge in language that I cannot repeat here. She, he merely wrote a letter to the Chief Justice to complain that because the judge had cited him for contempt, the judge should be removed from the case, and it was granted. Dr. Puni has gone heaven and earth to get Clemens on Yoniga removed. It was never granted. But Kenega Pond, by the stroke of a pen, complained that the judge could be biased against him because he held him in contempt. That judge was removed. And then he was given a slap on the wrist 
for perhaps what is even an, a worse offense than what the three boys in the Muntin Three case did. Why the different strokes for different people? As for NDC boys, they must go to jail and rot. But as for Kenny Japon, he must work. He must even have a judge of his preference sitting on the case. But as for Puni, he can go heaven and earth. The same judge will be maintained. And even if a new one comes, who makes a favorable ruling for him, that judge must be changed. And we are supposed to keep quiet and swallow all of this. Because why? We, we are slaves in Ghana. We are second class citizens. Akuf Wado and his MPP what are better. So whatever they want, they should get. And we should be enslaved. And Akuf Wado behaves like the typical bully Randy. He punches you in the groin. And when you are written in pain and you scream, he says that you are disturbing his peace. So you should keep your mouth shut. Well, we will never keep quiet. And the GBA, Akuf Wado, Godfrey Dami, Masias, we will never keep quiet over this, this mistreatment. Why? There's a reason why justice is represented by the lady who is blindfolded, has a scale and a sword. The blindfold means that she does not see who is before her. The skills means that she will do a balanced job. You cannot swindle an opposition, suppress us, do everything in your power to undermine us. Look, look at this birth certificate ruling, Randy. Because President Akufado wanted a new register, despite the fact that he won elections with the 2016 register, suddenly we are told that Randy, a birth certificate, I'm sure you've seen a birth certificate before, at least you have some for your children. Randy, your name and where you come from, your hometown, and that of your wife and where she comes from is captured on the birth certificate. Yet we are told in this country by a court that that certificate cannot determine where your child comes from. What kind of unfairness is this? What kind of imbalance and injustice is this? And when all of this has happened and we complain, we are told that we are undermining the judiciary. Randy, the judges who can pronounce death on you and I can sentence me as life to life imprisonment have suddenly become so fragile, they are spring chicken, that they will kill over and die the moment you criticize the judiciary. So we should keep quiet. Randy, in a democracy, nobody is above scrutiny. This is a democracy, not a judicial tyranny. It is a democracy, for crying out loud. And everybody reserves the right to comment on the work of public officials. No judge will tell us that after having been paid through our taxes, they are suddenly beyond scrutiny. And that if you scrutinize them, the institution will collapse. And it will not collapse. All the criticism that judges have received in this country, it has not stopped them from handing down sentences to people they deem guilty. So nobody will use that as a facade to conceal clear wrongdoing and injustice and unfairness against one section of society to the benefit of another. And President Kufa, you see, I, 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 was, I was in amazement. I was, I was beside myself with laughter when I listened to President Kufa. Who is he to presume to lecture us on what we can or cannot say about the judiciary? He, when he was greater Accra chairman of the Ghana Bar Association, the same judiciary that he claims if you criticize, you undermine. He, he led a boycott against them because somebody who disparaged judges had been cited for contempt and thrown into prison. He boycotted the course of this country for one whole month in 1995. Yet, as for us, we can't even raise a whimper against the judiciary. Because why? He is better a human being than us. And then he stands there to pontificate about corruption. He says, President Mama uh, was named in the Airbus matter, he was GO1. Look, he only underscored the uselessness of his government with that statement. You are president of a country, and your predecessor is said to have engaged in corruption. You, you, look, you sit there and look at him. Then you come and stand on a bar association platform to accuse him of wrongdoing. That is uselessness at the highest level. And in any event, was it not the same special prosecutor who called him the mother servant of corruption? So he accepts that he is a mother servant of corruption. He, was it not denounced in an Al Jazeera documentary recently as being part of ghost smuggling? When that thing happened to the two tantrums that they will sue Al Jazeera. Randy, have they sued Al Jazeera? So if it is merely being named in some international uh, corruption matter, that determine one's corruption. What is President Akufadu doing as president? He says that because President Mama has raised issue with unfair judicial practice and his deliberate packing of the courts with MPP people, President Mama is dangerous and should not be voted for. Randy, he, President Akufadu, who formed terrorist groups, hmm? okay. Delta forces, invisible forces, uh, border crocodiles, and what have you, and brought mercenaries to train them 
to assault the pillars of power. Even he was voted for. Ghanaians did not flinch. They didn't mind voting for him. Anybody who compares Reza Mahama to Reza Kufad will see which of them is sober, which of them is reflective, which of them deserves the office of the president. You were formed even in, in, in power, whereas he was the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. He was still harboring these terrorists. These terrorists went to attack a court in Kumasi, presided over by a pregnant judge. What did he do? He, the responsible leader, what did he do to those boys? Randy, on the very first day, he started working as president in this country. Another of his terrorists attacked a senior police officer. Randy, do you know that that gentleman has actually been enlisted in the Yara Police Service? After he assaulted that police officer, the gentleman who assaulted Nanka Bruce, he is in the Ghana Police Service as I speak to you. This is Akufuado's sense of responsibility. Your, your office is desecrated and disrespected in this manner. You didn't care. That gentleman is in the police. And you are coming to give President Akufuado, President Mama lectures on responsibility. Randy, he is president. He says that he is called Randy. clearing agent and that there is no basis for it. Randy, let me give you four instances why he is clearing agent and more. Look, the Australia visa scandal. Thieves in his government took about 45 journalists to, and you are in the sports fraternity, so I don't need to lecture you on this, posing as journalists, resulting in huge international embarrassment for Ghana. They come back, and we are told that an investigation is launched. On the eve of an MPB conference in the Volta region, President Kufadu pronounces that the persons investigated were not guilty, yet he doesn't tell anybody who did it. He doesn't care that who the thief in his government who took the people to Australia is. Randy, there was a cash for seat scandal. Parliament was looking into the matter. Before Parliament could even begin the proceedings, he stood at the flat staff house and declared Alan Chamantin innocent. I'm not saying that Alan was guilty. But at the very least, he did not allow the committee to finish his work. Randy, the most classic case was the Mubimpina scandal. You are aware that the, the former energy minister, or the energy minister at the time, Bwache set up a committee to look into the moving penal scandal. You remember? Mm. Within days of that, right. the president broadsided them by purporting that the BNI or so, or national security, had looked into the matter, and there was no wrongdoing, so people are cleared. Cecilia Dapa, and let me compare President Mama to President Kufado on the matter of corruption. My friend, Victor Hammer, merely dreamt of having a million dollars. Indeed, to quote her exactly, she said that if she did not have a million dollars in her account, she didn't even say she was going to steal. She was not going to antagonize somebody she deemed to be her senior in politics. For saying this, within less than 24 hours, she was dismissed from President Mahmoud's government. President Akufuado did not dismiss his Rapa when a million dollars and more was discovered, or she herself reported that over a million dollars and more had been stolen from her house. She didn't dismiss Sisla Dapa. Sisla Dapa resigned about two or three days after the matter broke. And what was President Akufuado's response? That he is confident that an investigation will clear her. When you do that, what do you expect the security agencies to do? So Randy, are you surprised that the special prosecutor has hit a brick wall in that matter? Are you surprised that the special prosecutor has hit a brick wall in that matter? Look at, look at the offensive nepotism that President Akufuado is engaging in this country. You become a president eh? within this, your daughters who have no track record of any business. Well, one of them, one of them, one of them, you, one of them you. secures the most lucrative shop at the terminal trade built by President Mahama overnight. One of them suddenly owns an upscale restaurant in an ultra expensive part of Grand Accra here overnight. Your, your cousin, the finance minister, Andy, his own company. I don't he, want to interject. He, he, oh, but let me make my point, please. No, Why you time, I kept time, quiet. Have time, have ah, you are not the timekeeper. You, you are not the timekeeper. You Randy, chose to do what you wanted I'll with your time. I'll just draw your attention. Yes, that, uh, what's, what's your problem? Randy, is, yes, what's he, your problem? My problem is yes. that he's had more time oh. to this and the matters that we are not discussing. We are not discussing President Akufuado. There's a specific matter. Ah. 
Fast so cash. Yeah. So yeah. If we have that, 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 that we are comments. going to go and we are quite. No, did that make the comments? I just want to draw attention to it. So if that's the case, let's go. Did that make the comments? Now, now, if President Kufuado's daughters are the subject matter for discussion, we will begin to discuss families here. Oh, let's If that is the subject matter, let's go. Randy, I just draw attention. So if that's the subject matter, you are watching quietly without. First, first, please. So Randy, that's okay. First of all, Randy, I said I just drawn, I just drawn your attention to it. Would you allow me to speak? Randy. Okay, you let's I gave if you they are discussing daughters of the slide. president, they will discuss I gave daughters you and sons slide. of other many other people. I gave people you here. the opportunity so, to speak on this matter, but I thought I that didn't was a specific hold matter. on. You decided to discuss the issue as you didn't fit. I did not stop you from speaking. You decided to speak how you wanted to speak. You finished, and I moved on to Felix. Would you kindly allow him to finish? If he finishes, you have issues to raise, you'll be able to raise them. But I just draw attention that the daughters of the president. Yeah, I have to. You are a host. And the daughters of the president are not subject matter for a discussion. Randy, the daughters of President Mahama, sorry, uh, President Kufado, are a legitimate subject for discussion. He is the one talking about corruption. I am examining his credentials. When President Kufado was in opposition, his daughter did not own the juiciest shop in Terminal 3. It is a fact. His daughter did not own a pricey restaurant. His cousin, whose obscure law firm nobody knew about, suddenly is the lawyer for any and everybody that the government owes and making fat commissions on it. It is a fact that we know. The president's cousin, Ken Ufoyata, appointed his own company of offensive nepotism to broker loans and two commissions. 151 million Ghana cities is what he earned. It is a legitimate point for discussion. A president who supervises this sort of theft does not have the calamity to come and lecture anybody on corruption. Why? Can't, can't you see President Kufuado? When he was opposition, didn't you see him? When you look at him, don't you see corruption written all over him? Why? Who doesn't know about the role that his brothers are playing in the energy sector of this country? Look at the Jensa deal that we came to discuss, Randy. He is willing to make Ghana lose $1.5 million so that his crony pockets that money. And somebody has come to lecture us about corruption. Look, it is legitimate. He has been the worst president this country has seen. I have on record to have said that I didn't expect much of him. I didn't think he would make any good president. All the things we were saying about him in opposition was a lie. But in, in government, he has exceeded even my expectation as the worst we've had. And what he did yesterday at the bar conference is an aberration. It was a disgrace. How do you sit in a country and do this to your own institutions? The Electoral Commission a commission that is supposed to be a referee between parties contesting elections. You deliberately pluck MPP people to go and helm it. One of them yesterday was on radio claiming that the reason why they have restricted registration to district centers was that voting is not compulsory. Look at the mindset. So they must deliberately stop people from voting because it's not compulsory. What kind of childish mindset is this? And then to, to make matters worse, against all reason, you go and pick a rapid MPP propagandist and come and make him a commissioner. And you want President Mama to pour flowers on you and pour perfume on you and applaud you. Why? What did President Mama do to even deserve the sort of attacks that came from the MPP? All the lies they told about him, that he owned hotels in Dubai. He did this, he did that. Today, if we subject the properties that Kufuado and his family owns, would they pass the test? Would they pass the corruption test? Why are we pretending that all is kosher in this country? What he has done is a disgrace. Look, when President Mama said that NP, NDC lawyers should avail themselves to train as judges, he was even mild. Look, if President Mama came and appointed Sami Jenfi, Abbas Nuridin, Eric J. and Co. to the Supreme Court and elsewhere, he would have done nothing. Because why? Why should we stick with an MPP judiciary? A judiciary in which within one week, others who want an injunction, injunction get it. Others who want one don't get it. The Chief Justice is, we are told, traveled outside Ghana. So it wasn't available. Meanwhile, we do know that in the absence of the Chief Justice, the most senior Supreme Court judge acts. So the even technology allows for the alloca allocation of a judge to a case. That didn't happen. She comes and zooms straight to Cape Coast to the bar conference. That didn't happen. Then the moment the former president complains, suddenly we find a date which is outside of the period of the registration, rendering it moot. Do you need a soothsayer to tell you that there's some manipulation going on? And we cannot say this. Look, Randy, we, we need to be very clear in this country. 
no institution will elevate itself above the citizenry. The eminent U.S. jurist, Justice Louis Brandes, said that sunlight is the best disinfectant. And what makes the matter even more serious is that, Randy, unlike Sly and his colleagues in Parliament, or President Kufuadu and some of his ministers, who actually are elected, and therefore have, a, as he, he, he began his submission, by giving an account of some of the things he's doing in Botiano. It is because there's an impending election, he must account for his stewardship. At the very least, if the people of Botiano don't like him, they will vote against him. So there is some level of accountability. But judges don't have that. When they appoint you as a judge, you only live when you are 70, unless you commit a stated offense. So there's no level of accountability beyond public scrutiny. And that public scrutiny can never be taken away from the citizenry. I reject this attempt that is made. We make a fetish of our, of, our, of our judiciary. And because in the past, some heinous crime was committed against some judges, suddenly we should lose our freedoms. Suddenly we should lose our freedoms. We can no longer comment on the work of judges. We see clear bias, we can't say it. When did we run this? So all the fight we made to restore democracy was to result in the submission of our liberties at the altar of a judicial tyranny. Randy, there will be no judicial tyranny in Ghana. Never. We will not stand for it. And I repeat, we will never accept to be second-class citizens or slaves in this country just because we are NDC. The NDC has the same stake in Ghana as Sly, as President Akufuado, and his people in the MPP. And if the MPP is treated one way, we should be treated the same way. Otherwise, we will complain. And to conclude, I have said before in your program, Randy, our voices, they will rise in a jangling discord and pierce their ears every day that we feel offended, every day that we feel cheated, every day that we feel hard done by. And nobody can stop us. Nobody will kick us in the groin and ask us to shut up. It will never happen, Randy. Right. Okay. So far, so good. Say open online portal at Ghana. Ah, you can share, you can follow, you can comment here. To my best of knowledge, without any biases, I append them to you. My name is Pendream TV. Pendream TV, dear, I see them, you po.